Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of Things We Said Today. This is a weekly Beatles podcast, which centers mainly on what's going on in the Beatle world, news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, best known for my syndicated radio program called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner, and Mr. Examiner of many different columns, too many to mention, I know. Steve Marinucci. Hi, everybody. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And I'm actually very excited about this show because this is something that I've been doing on the radio for many years. When I started doing a Beatles show in 1982, at the end of every year, I would always do a show in which I mention my wish list for the following year. So I thought, hey, why not do it with Steve? And so what I thought we would do in this uh, particular show is, uh, and I'm sure many Beatle fans have done this before, if they had the chance to um, play God for a moment, <laughs> and they had some power, and they could pick what would be released the following year, and we broke it down to the Beatles as a group, and each of them individually, obviously John and George, posthumous releases, but we were only given one thing. If we were granted a wish of what we'd like to see from each of the four Beatles solo-wise and also the Beatles as a group, what would it be? In some ways, this could be an easy topic, but then when you think about it, if you're greedy, like I have been, mm -hmm. <laughs> at the same time, I've, I've often said we've been blessed with so much from the Beatles. At this point, if nothing else came out, I wouldn't feel like I'm cheated in any way, but I still want more like most of you. And certainly where the Beatles as a group are concerned, I'm sure that for many of us, there's a laundry list a mile long of things that we'd like to see come out. But if we only had one thing that came out the following year, what would be the most important to you? So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to go back and forth with uh, each of the Beatles individually, unless, Steve, you want to start with the group. What would you like to do? Let's start, let's do the individuals, because uh, I think the Beatles thing the Beatles thing is probably, you know, like holding it in suspense. I think that's the biggie. For Not it. for me, because if you've listened to the show before, <laughs> right? I already know where you stand. You uh, already know where I stand. Yeah. Yes, you do. Anyway, but let's start with uh, Ringo. If you um, could pick one thing for 2013 you'd like to see released from him. And by the way, this doesn't have to be a CD or a DVD. This could right. also be a tour. You right. know, another all-star band tour, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that's not my wish for Ringo. And actually, this is something that I've had on my mind for a long time. And I, I don't know if I've mentioned this here before, but instead of Ringo doing the usual album, although he, I know that's his plan for next year because he's already mentioned that he's working on an album, or doing another tour, which I wouldn't be surprised if he does that either, I would really like to see Ringo do something to show off his drumming skills, his percussion work. I mean, we all know he's a fantastic drummer. We all know that. But he never really likes to show it off very much. Hmm. I mean, occasionally he'll, he's done, you know, he, he did that one interview where he actually demonstrated his drumming. A couple of years ago he did that little thing with... Um, uh, about learning how to play the tabla, which I thought was very cool. Right. But he never really projects, he shows himself off for what a great drummer he is. And I would like to see him, I know Mickey Hart has done things like this. Um, Are you talking about some kind of a DVD? Like, either way. Um, not, not so much instructional? No. I know that, I know, um, Jerry Lee Lewis did, uh, to, not to try and get way off the subject, Jerry Lee Lewis did a thing a couple of years ago where he was showing off his his playing skills on the piano, which actually got a little more technical than it really needed to, and which was a little disappointing. I'm a huge Jerry Lee fan, and I was kind of disappointed. But I think Ringo would have a, a blast just doing something where he would take you know get a couple of people, maybe some all stars, but just doing something that was percussion based. And I really wish he would do something like that. He, the All-Star Tours don't do that. Mm. And I would love to see him do something like that. 
show himself off. He always shies away from that. But I'll tell you something. I, you just reminded me of something. Mm -hmm. Because in one of the All-Star Band tours, one of the ones with Sheila E., I think it was for Sheila's song, Love Bizarre, Ringo actually did a drum solo on that tour. Yeah, I think I remember that now because I, 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 I believe I, I, was, I saw that tour. And there was a DVD that came out, mm -hmm. and they didn't put that song in. Right. <laughs> so of all the songs, you know, you, you've always heard about Ringo doesn't like to do solos, and we all know about his solo on The End from Abbey Road. Right. But here he does a solo, and he doesn't release it. Right. I, I, yeah, it's, it's, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. But yeah, that would be my that would be my wish. How about hmm. you? Well, I would say either you know another new album because to me, there's a part of me that still, after all these years, when there's a new release from any of the Beatles, and and even in the case of posthumous releases from John and George, I'm still like a kid in a candy store. I still look forward to that. There's nothing more exciting than knowing that. Paul has a new album coming out, or Ringo has a new album coming out, and I look forward to it. But I would like to add that I'd like to see him go back one more time and make a country album. Hmm. Because Buku's of Blues, a lot of people have applauded that album through the years, and it didn't sell that well when it first came out. Nope. But we all know Ringo's love for country music, and his voice certainly fits that field. And I always remember there was an interview I did with Ken Mansfield, where he was talking about how one of the things he had to do for Ringo was to buy a lot of the country albums that were released in the United States and send it to him in England. And people here in the States were aware of Bukuza Blues. So I've often thought it would be a great idea, although he probably will never do this, if he could tour with an all-star country band and have it be a mixture of some veterans... And maybe some of the newer people. And he did kind of go in, not in that direction. But I mean, well, I, I should say, there were the sessions that he did with Chips Moman that he that he stopped. Uh -huh. Remember those? Right. That were done. Those were done in Nashville, and you know, so that I mean, he he did go back there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's too. I mean, it's too bad that 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 happened. But no, that's a great that's a great suggestion, and I think his his music now has progressed to the point where those would sound a lot better now than they did um, back then. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, that would I I like that suggestion. You know, it's really a shame is that Buck Owens isn't around anymore because um, Buck Owens would have likely would have likely participated in something like that, right? And that would have been that would have been a lot of fun. Consequ you know, uh, almost consequently to this discussion, I just today got a copy of the old DVD with the Beach Boys doing country, the Nashville Sounds DVD. I got, I picked up a used copy off of Amazon that wasn't really expensive. That one goes up pretty high. And I know that at the time that album came out, there was a lot of, a lot of Beach Boy fans, myself included, who did not like that. And I was sitting there listening to that DVD today, and it sounded fantastic. Hmm. And it made me, you know, I mean, you're mentioning this, you know, with what they could do with the sound now and everything. It would sound, it would be a great album. It would be an excellent album. Right. And there, there are people in the country field who really respect Ringo and, uh, you know, would really enjoy working with him in any capacity. Right. And he's got, he's got a voice that's kind of matched to those, to country, really, if you think about it. It fits really well. Right. And not only that, but not just the country album, but when he has done country-flavored songs on his pop albums, you know, one of my favorite songs of his is the song Crying mm -hmm. from Ringo's Road of Viewer. And also Sunshine Life for Me really worked very well, which right. was more of a, I don't know, hillbilly-type sound or, or style on uh, one of his songs. But yeah, I, I'd like to see him return a little bit to country. He worked with uh, Willie Nelson. Uh, on the song uh, "Right One for Me," right, and they sounded great together on there from uh, the Ringo Rama album. So and I'd that like... naturally still sounds fantastic. I yeah. mean, it, it really more than just a you know give Ringo something to do uh, role. It was really a great song for him to sing, and I mean, and that doesn't even count the version he did with 
Buck Owens years later. I right. mean, the Beatles one is a great is a great version, and it it, it fit him perfectly. I so, agree. Yeah, I no, that's a that's a superb suggestion. That's mm. even that's even better than the. If I had to choose, I think I'd, I'd take your suggestion over mine. I think that's. That's well, a great. That's yeah. a great suggestion. For several years now, I've been saying I wish Ringo would tour with a with a country all star band. But you know, if he does a country album, I'd be thrilled. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to. Why don't you pick the next Beatle? I'll say John. Okay. And my suggestion for John actually is more for Yoko, and that is to get the John Lennon Live in New York City DVD back in print and on Blu-ray. It oh is my out God! Of print at the moment. You can get it for a, not too bad a price on Amazon because I looked it up today, but that is given the fact that it's his last uh, or one of the last performances he did, and it's such a great full-on performance with him and Yoko and Elephant's Memory. Right. That that should get back in, in print. A secondary suggestion that I'm thinking of just while I'm just because of this is to put out a more extensive compilation of the Mike Douglas shows. Hmm. Uh, and that would be that would be kind of fun. Uh, those got released, you know, on bootleg, and I'm sure a lot of people have them. Um, but it, it would be nice to have those, at least a compilation of that week-long thing. There were a lot of highlights, not only the Chuck Berry, the number with Chuck Berry, but, there, there you know, his discussions and... He got in, into an argument with with uh, studio audience members at one point. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't remember exactly what it was. But Rhino issued that full week on VHS years ago, but never put it on DVD. And mm. That's really, really a shame. That would be nice to have that on on DVD too. So, well, Steve, you're not going to believe this, but Uh-oh. my suggestion. The first one that you said was exactly what I came up with. Okay. The one-to-one concert, because, first of all, the CD sounds like crap. (laughs) It really does, of Live in New York City. It has a very tinny sound. And actually, if you listen to the two recordings from the John Lennon anthology from the evening show of Come Together and It's So Hard, they sound so much better. Right. And what was on John Lennon Live in New York City. And also, you know, you watch the video now, and it it looks horrible. They can really clean that up. Right. Where John and both George are concerned, because they died way too young, you have to treasure every live performance that they made. Exactly. So each one is so so much, so precious, really. So you really have to preserve everything that's out there, even uh, the Sir Lou Grade, the tribute to that on TV. Put that out. Maybe, it, maybe you know, maybe a, as an extension, uh, Yoko should put together a, a, a Lennon Live compilation. Although, I would much prefer to see the full one to one out for that reason. Um, right. You know, but uh, I would actually a love to see. Is way overdue too. Yeah, I would love to see. I don't even know if it exists. But all the other artists that performed at One to One, Stevie Wonder. Yes, it does. It it's does. Bo- that stuff's all been bootlegged. Oh, okay, I I've never seen that before. So that would be great to put it all in one collection. Mm-hmm. So you can see it from that perspective, you know, and Roberta Flack and Shanana. There is a so. John Sinclair foot. There is footage from that uh, bootleg. Mm. Um, well, you you can. You're talking about a live collection. You can right. take that. You can take the Sir Lou Grade uh, which is, which performance. Has been, which has been out there. Right. You can do that. Um, combine it all, mm-hmm. those those few one-offs from John, and put some kind of compilation together. And I wouldn't be surprised if Yoko does that somewhere along the road, right. somewhere down the road, uh, and I hope she does. But definitely a new DVD and Blu-ray uh, of uh, the one-to-one concert, and also uh, a CD. Mm-hmm. And I've never known, and I don't know if you know the answer, but why was it the afternoon show that was released and not the evening show? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I know that I interviewed, um, I can't remember, one of the members of Elephant's Memory last year, and I can't remember which one it was, and I asked them why it wasn't back, wasn't in print. Uh, live in New York City wasn't in print, and they had no idea. 
Mm. They had no idea, and they, in fact, they wanted it too. So, I'm sure they would love to have it back in print. Right. Okay. How about uh, George? George, that's easy. Easy takes volume two. Or early takes volume two. Okay. Um, I loved early takes volume one just because of what it was, and but it was way too short. And I'm sure there's a ton more of that stuff. Actually, I'd like to see volumes two, three, and four. <laughs> but but yeah, I would love to see more of that stuff. Well, uh, we have heard that Giles Martin is working on a follow up, so. You know that's going to happen. We just don't know if that'll come out in 2013. Right. Hmm. Well, I will agree with you about that because I love those demos. Mm -hmm. I have become a major fan of demos. And for some reason, George just sounds so natural with just an acoustic guitar. Well, there's so many. I mean, they could even do a bootleg collection and release some of the stuff that... I mean, there was some wonderful stuff that got released on bootleg. There were all the alternate takes from All Things Must Pass that right. came out, which were really, really nice. There was the the demos that were called that were that are everybody seems to know as Beware of Abco. Mm -hmm. They were absolutely stunning. I know. There's there's some unreleased songs of George in right. there that that were pretty good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that could come out. There's even the. Um, I don't know if the uh, I'm trying to remember if the somewhere in England um alter the the uh the original version the, the um tracks that uh, didn't come out on the album uh, that were on the first version of the album right flying hour and flying hour yeah which uh, those are tremendous and I don't know that they got I think there was there was li they, they were limited um, right they they came out through uh those books the Genesis books yeah, yeah. Those songs by out. George Harrison there should have come out uh, have, have been given more wide distribution, and they could do that. I mean, if he put together, if Danny put together a uh, uh, a compilation, you know, a bootleg compilation or something like that. Um, so you don't even know you're saying Danny. I don't even know if Danny wants to get involved well, with I that think as well, because I, the fact that Giles Martin has kind of taken over with the demos, I don't know. You know, I Danny's think, very proud of, of his father, but he's also concentrating on his own music, so... Right, but I think that he has a... He's indicated before in interviews that he is very much aware of what's been doing, and if him not if not him, Olivia. So between him and Olivia, they're, you know, one of them knows what's going on. Mm. So, and I would think that, you know, one of them would have approval for whatever gets put out, I'm sure... So I think that's probably very likely that, you know, that they would know if, you know, for one of those things. And I would hope that they are looking beyond the, going beyond skimming his, George's um, output uh, as far as, uh, you know, what they're looking at. And I hope Early Takes Volume 2 goes goes pretty deep. Well, you know, we don't know exactly how much unreleased material there is of George, but I do remember... George gave an interview to Billboard magazine to Timothy White back mm -hmm. when um, the Yellow Submarine song track came out, and he had indicated, he said that there's more unreleased material from him than Del Reeves. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said that in the interview, and um, he was planning some kind of a box set called Portrait of a Leg End right. of unreleased material. So, you know, does that mean it's all demos? You know, or alternate takes of his, of his songs, or are there a lot of unreleased songs of his that we well, have? Well, given heard? the fact that all the All Things Must Pass demos did sneak out, however, they did sneak. However, you know, however they managed to sneak out, it looks like there's quite a bit. So, we'll see what they decide to do. Okay, and also some of that stuff came out on the All Things Must Pass remaster too. True. True. So kind of started with that as far as an official release mm -hmm. as far as i'm concerned um i would like to see the dark horse album and extra texture remastered finally because they're the only two albums of george's solo career that remain unremastered mm. if that's a word <laughs> yeah and, and you know i don't know what's taken so long with i mean that that's kind of been forgotten and that's too bad it's really a shame and you know you go back to the remastering of George's solo career, you had All Things Must Pass, which came out in 2000. Mm -hmm. You had the um, all the Dark Horse albums from 33 and a Third through 
uh, Cloud Nine and Live in Japan. That was 2004. The box right. set came out for that. Living right. in the Material World was 2006. So it's already six years, and those two albums have been out of print. Right. And I don't understand why. And I've, I've always thought that, certainly in the case of Dark Horse, if they're thinking about putting out some kind of DVD of the tour, maybe that's why they're holding up Dark Horse. But I don't understand why Extra Texture... I don't know why extra texture is being held back. Right. So, uh, um, I, I, yeah, I don't know either. It's yeah, it's a mystery. But to go along with that, whether it's part of the package or not, I definitely want to see a DVD of the '74 tour in mm -hmm. the best print that's yeah, out there. Because I mean, we've seen those songs that were distributed with the um, with the uh, the Dark Horse package and. Yeah, obviously there is a full tape, and why that hasn't been put out, God only knows. Hmm. And just like what we said with John, you know, these are precious, these live performances. There were so few of them. George only did the one North American tour, that's it, live in Japan, and a few scattered shows here and there. And what was, what was interesting about the Japan tour is that got extensively bootlegged. There are, audi there are all sorts of, I believe there are audience recordings from every show. Hmm. And they could, conceivably, take those audience recordings and fix them up and put some or all of them out. I don't think they'd put all of them out, but at least they could put some of them out, assuming... Because, I mean, he did, he did change the set list a couple of times. There well, were early of on, yeah. He did uh, Fish on the Sand right. early on, and I think which he did... Which actually which sounded wonderful, because I've heard the audience recording from that. It's mm. great. I can't. I don't understand why he didn't keep going with that. Right. Love comes to everyone. I think he did in one show. Mm -hmm. I think. Right. So yeah, you know, any of these things I'd be happy with. But for a long time, I've been I've been craving the '74 tour on DVD, mm -hmm. and along with that, Dark Horse and Extra Texture. Those should okay. not be forgotten. <laughs> okay. So now we move on to Paul. That's pretty easy um, because. He's working on a new album, and I'm looking. It, it from the sound of it, he looks like he's going in a in a not so usual direction. He's not going to do. He's not going to be Paul McCartney ballad singer or Paul McCartney. Uh, yeah, you know the yes, uh, yesterday 2013. It's gonna it's going to be something edgy, mm -hmm. perhaps like cut me some slack, or at least he's looking at. Trying to be de trying to modernize the sound, and if that's the case, it should be really interesting. I'm thinking that that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, um, well, I would agree with you. <laughs> I would say, you know, my pick would be a new album from Paul, and a lot of people may not realize this because Paul has been so prolific in his solo career, but it's taken him a long time in between new studio albums, and. Uh, the last one, really, you have to count the Fireman, uh, Electric Arguments, and that was in 2008. Right. So we are and talking it, about... It's been that long. I can't, I can't it, believe it's been that long. Yeah. So if he puts out a new album next year, it's his first new album in five years. The thing about Paul is, it's kind of funny, you know. <laughs> I keep thinking about his song, Ever Present Past, because the thing about Paul is that as he's releasing his new albums, in between, he's got so many other things that he puts out. He puts out his remastered catalog. Right. He'll put out a classical album. He might do The Fireman. He might do a live album. He might have a 50s album like the Russian album or Run, Devil, Run. You know, so it always feels like he's putting out so much stuff. But in terms of new music, all new material, studio album... They've been few and far between. He hasn't been nearly as prolific as he was in previous decades. And, you know, that could just be a matter of age. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, he's been... But I mean, he's been working so much, though. It's not like... Um, no, he's never been lazy. Don't, no, don't get me the wrong. Thing. The, the thing... And, you know, we've heard about... Um, there's a classical guitar piece that he's composed. And that'll come out at some point. He's always working on different projects, mm -hmm. but as far as what has come out of new material, the waiting has been longer. Uh, I hope he doesn't do another ballet. Thank you. <laughs> Please <laughs> well, there, don't. Well, that's... Uh, I happen to like the music from the ballet. You didn't did, care for that? Did you really? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Very pretty stuff in there. I think he, it's great when he does a lot of just where he focuses mainly on melody. And he had to pattern the music to what was being done on stage in some cases for the ballet. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it worked. Some of it actually, I think it was the second movement, reminded me a lot of like uh, what you might hear in West Side Story. But I really did like... Uh, the ballet a lot. I mean, I like some of the classical stuff. Uh, actually, it took me a long time to get into Liverpool Oratorio, but I di- but I did. But some of it, some of the stuff, just sounds really. I guess I, I, I hate to use the word amateurish, but it really kind of does uh, um, for me. And I'm, you know, more than willing to listen to to Paul doing classical, but I just haven't liked some of it. And um, oh well. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've liked most of it. You know, I have to really listen again to Standing Stone, which I haven't listened to for quite a while. That was a very um, dissonant album musically. Yeah. It didn't have the kind of uh, really uh, memorable melodies for me from Paul, mm-hmm. outside of Celebration, which is really a beautiful piece. But um, no, I, actually, I shouldn't really say that Paul hasn't been as prolific because if you add all the classical music. You know that is new music that he's writing. Right. So I mean, he's been do- he's been so busy between that and you know the outside projects, and he's been so busy. He's been promoting something almost every day. You can't say that he hasn't been doing anything. He's been incredibly busy. No, you're missing my point. I'm only talking about new studio pop albums. Oh, okay. You know, he's involved with a lot of different projects, and he certainly has done all the performing, you know. Right. I would never, ever accuse him of being lazy. He's anything but that. No, absolutely but, um, not. But as far as putting out new material of new pop albums, mm-hmm. it's taken a while. It just doesn't he, seem like it do, because... He's been doing so much stuff, you know, as, I mean, on, he's been doing so many other things. Um the fact that he hasn't done a new album, I mean, he's been busy with the tours. And may, I don't know, maybe the tours are, are a diversion from having to, you know, to work on new material. But, I mean, he, he's he's been doing the tours. He's been doing, he, I mean, he's always doing something. And, um, you know, I mean, this thing with 12, 12, 12 now, I mean, you know, there's, there's just been so many things. And I, you know, you're right. Paul is not lazy. He is absolutely not lazy. He never, can, he never sits still. <laughs> he never sits still. Nope. He's always got something in the works, no matter always what. Does. But I'm just, I'm only talking about the pop albums. Okay. That's all that I'm saying here is that the waits have been longer. So. Well, he also, he also too has been involved in the reissues, and that kind of takes a little bit of that pop thing because people get focused on, you know, on the older albums and. They it kind of takes them away from well where's where's the new music I mean so that kind of fills in the spaces there a little bit you think uh I agree to some to some point I don't know how he's very hands on from what I've heard but there's only so much work he can do and he has a team of people that work on the remasters yes so no, yes you're, you're right and he he is very hands on but having the discussion go on about the older albums and the word the rumors are that wings over america is next does take people's minds off new music so that may may or may not be somewhat intentional but that's why i always think of that song ever present past because he always has his past thrown up in his face right it's a very proud past to be part of he not only has his own solo career but there's always beetle projects too yep which segs perfectly into our wish list for a Beatles group project. So if okay. you could pick one, Steve, what would that be? Well, that's pretty easy, and I think I've complained about this before. We really need a video compilation, mm-hmm. period. And it, I, it, it even got uh, a little... Uh, I thought of it again, watching Magical Mystery Tour re- revisited and seeing the uh, excerpt of Penny Lane in there. The stunning, incredible quality looking Penny Lane that we should have in full. And that was, and and also Strawberry Fields Forever, both of them were in there. 
and they look so good, and why we're getting bits and pieces in various projects but not getting the whole thing. And that I think that would be as huge as, as one would be, mm-hmm. as one was, excuse me. The only I think, question I would ask you about this is what do you do about all the songs for which there are more than one video? I think they would probably cut it back to one version. I mean, you know, Beatles fans, and I know Beatles fans would probably not be happy with that. No, they'll be complaining, they, believe me. They, well, of course. I mean, we're we're very picky people. Mm. And I don't know, maybe they would maybe they would go ahead and and put in the 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 alternate versions. That would be nice. Maybe it should be the, it should be two DVDs and the second DVD is are the, the extra bit, yeah, yeah. Why not? What's wrong with that? True, uh, or maybe three DVDs like Paul did with with his. But I, yeah, I would, I would love to see, I would love to see that. I would absolutely love to see that. I mean, John's done one, Ringo's done one, George. George well, yeah, not really. Well, <laughs> it's not complete, of. and neither is George's. The random videos that came out from George right. and Ringo, they're not complete collections by any stretch of the imagination. No. But um, I, would, how, I would love to see a Beatles, a Beatles collection. We how would you handle um, Free as a Bird and Real Love? Should they be in there? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, because they are, and we could get into we can get into the whole discussion of whether they are part of the the Beatles core collection or whatever. But I think they are. I know that the night I saw the, uh, Free as a Bird. It went straight to me. I mean, I that was a very emo- emotional moment for me, and I'm sure it was emotional for everybody. And it was closure, and you know, it was the whole thing. And yes, uh, Free as a Bird and Real Love deserve to be there. Mm. It, it would be even even nicer if the much rumored now and then was actually put in there too. If they had if they compiled a, a video for that, but I don't think they would. But, well, then they'd have to finish the song. <laughs> right. Well, assuming it's not finished. Mm. And how would you handle, how about videos that were made after the Beatles broke up? Like, for example, um, the 20th anniversary for Love Me Do, they made a video for that. Should that be included? No. Uh, I, I mean, you have, to, you, have to, you, know, you have to make decisions, creative decisions, and I think... Something like a 20th anniversary "Love Me Do" would not be necessary if there were original versions of all these. I mean, they're going to have to make they're going to have to make creative decision, uh, decisions, and I think a few things are going to get left anyway. Mm. So, uh, you know, there's just no way you can put every time a song was performed, call it a video. I mean, look at all the live versions of. She loves you, for example, and mm-hmm. things. I, you know, you have to, you have to cut it off. And I think they they would probably do that. And then I think you know the bootleggers would probably take up and go, here's the alternate versions and right. all that stuff. And but I think you know we really need that video collection. I think it's it would be fantastic. Okay, no argument there. When when, when it comes to Beatle projects of things that should come out, there's so many of them. And it's all apples and oranges with me. I mean, I'd be happy with any of them if they mm-hmm. came out. But I still have to say, first and foremost, that the top of the list has to be Let It Be. Because it's been out of print for so long. It's a big part of their history. And, um, you know, I always remember seeing the Beatles anthology and seeing the footage then, in 1995, of what it looked like. And it was a better print than anything I'd ever seen before. Right. Imagine what it could look like now. And they've yeah. talked a lot about it. Ringo has said it's going to come out. Michael Lindsay Hogg has said it's going to come out. They just haven't said when. And when you add to that all the additional footage that they should add to that as, as bonus material, it could be a very interesting package. And in addition to that, they really should, and I know I'm asking for too much, they should put out a CD of unreleased rehearsals of the best of the Let It Be Get Back rehearsals. Well, I think that for the general public, I think the video compilation would be a bigger sell, would be a bigger hit. Um, Probably right. And I think uh, Let It Be would 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 bring up a lot of the, especially now, with the way the internet works and everything like that. There would be a lot of discussion about the Beatles fighting 
infighting during the Let It Be sessions and stuff. But I think the the video compilation would be a better would be better uh, just all around. I mean, Let It Be. I, I'm not saying don't put Let It Be out. I would love Let It Be to come out. I would love the remastered Shea Stadium to come out. Yeah, there's, would there's so to, many of them. In fact, I really think that I would personally like to see that ahead of. I think I'd like to see that ahead of Let It Be because it would be so good. Boy, you keep uh, dumping on Let It Be here. <laughs> well, uh, it's not that it's not that I don't like Let It Be, I, or I don't want Let It Be to come out. I think the Shea Stadium concert was such a great TV special in it, in, when it was originally aired, and I think a lot of people would enjoy that. I mean, it was such a great moment in their history, and they've got the footage of the whole show. You know, let's put that whole thing out, um, mm. too. Uh, I mean, there's so many things I would love to. If I was, if 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 I was running the show, you know, I'd be putting out the video compilation, Let It Be, Shea Stadium, Hollywood right. Bowl. We've all mentioned from the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, there's whole there's news footage. There's a, a shot that was taken of that whole show that night that has been synced in bootlegs to that. That would be wonderful to put out. There's so many things. Hmm. There's so many things. What yeah, things? I mean, if Apple put out one thing every single year, towards the end of each year for Christmas or something, they have enough material there for really strong releases to go on for five to ten years easily. That's that's how I feel. Well, they did. They actually did more than the usual this year. Oh, I know that. And I was really surprised. To be honest, I really did not expect... I didn't expect to see Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine in the same year. Right. But if Michael Lindsay Hogg is correct, we will see Let It Be next year. Because he did say Magical Mystery Tour would come out in, in 2012. Excuse me. But did he say Let It Be would come out in 2013? Yes, he, did. he said Let It Be would come out the following year. Okay, so we'll hold him to that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Okay. So that was great. Our wish list... We actually shared some of the same same ideas here. Right. It's really interesting how we both came up with the one-to-one concert, though. Yes. Hmm. Of all the things from John. But anyway, that puts a wrap on uh, our show this time. And if any of you would like to get in touch with us, you can do so by writing to us at our own email address. I'm so excited I even crack my voice when I say that. <laughs> it's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And you can also get in touch with us through Facebook. Steve has his own uh, Facebook page. And uh, I have my own, Ken Michaels. We have our own Facebook page of Things We Said Today. There's so many ways you can get in contact with us. You can check out my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. There's lots of interviews on the website with people connected to the Beatles. And uh, there's trivia and prizes given away every single week. And you can also read the millions of articles that uh, Steve writes every single week. And he does write that many. Seems like it. You know, he never sleeps. He's right there at the computer. That's right. He's I am at, right right at this very moment at the computer. He's at the keypad all day long. Just about. His fingers are really tired, folks. Just, but, yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. So if you'd like to read his many articles on the Beatles, and he, there's a Beatles examiner, there's a Paul McCartney examiner, George Harrison examiner, Ringo Starr examiner, and do you know yesterday was my 17th year? It was the anniversary, the 17th anniversary of the day I put up the uh, Abbey Road's Beetle page. That was the beginning of Abbey Road's Beetle page. Wow. Years. So that's December the 19th, since we're, we're recording this on the 20th. On the 20th, yeah. So we should say it was just 17. It was just, yeah, and you know what I mean. <laughs> well, congratulations, Steve, on that anniversary. Thank you. It's also the third month anniversary of things we said today. That's right. We're getting <laughs> we're getting up there. This is getting to be a this is getting to be a regular thing. Yeah. So, I hope you're enjoying it as much as we're enjoying doing it. So thanks so much for listening. This is Ken Michaels being joined by Steve Marinucci, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time.